How are your lacrosse skills? Did oh man, no, around? I didn't. I didn't. No, that was just for them today. A couple of guys did mention though. Maybe nice to you know mix things up a little bit and uh, you know maybe maybe a reprieve. Maybe have some fun, but but more so just to kind of change up maybe the rotation a little bit. Sure, and Ricky does a great job with that. He really does. Like if there's a way for him to switch things up um, when we're not on the ice, he he finds that way. And today, fortunate enough that the Roughnecks are playing, um, that we were able to use their field, I guess is what you would call it. Um, and the guys were able to have a little bit of fun at the same time, get a workout in. And are you still sensing that, you know, while, while having some fun, but just, you know, sort of that focus right now about what has to happen for this group to kind of get things back on track? Sure. I mean, they, they know that we have to play at our best and we have to do that in a hurry. So that it's, it's not anything that's new for them. Um, so there's been a lot of conversation about it, and, and that's really what it's about now is that they come tomorrow expecting to win and ready to win and ready to play the right way to do that for a full 60 minutes. We look at Winnipeg, and we can see why they're pretty successful. Mm -hmm. But from a coach's perspective, when you look at Winnipeg, what do you see? I see a team that doesn't – they don't beat themselves. Uh, they don't give a lot up because they make smart plays with the puck, and they play a heavier brand of, of hockey. So they're a difficult team to play against. and. Um, I think it's a great opponent for us coming in here tomorrow. I really do. So this gives us an opportunity to play the right way as well and look to get ourselves back in, on track here. You want your team to play probably, you mentioned consistency, the same way against everybody, yeah. regardless of where they are in the standings. But as you say, this might be a good test for your group to because they have shown that they can rise up. Oh, that. sure. And we would expect nothing different. So Winnipeg's playing very well. They have a very good team. They're well coached, and it's going to be a good game tomorrow. How close is uh, Jacob to returning? Uh, he's he's close. He's skating. Um, not anticipating him being eligible for us tomorrow, but he is close. When you don't have him in the lineup, and, and you really like that fourth mm -hmm. line when they were put together, what what do you miss when he's not in? Pace. I think that's the biggest thing that you see from him is that he plays the game with a lot of speed. So. Um, that's one thing I guess I should say. The other is he's got energy, whether it's on the bench or in the dressing room. He's he's the same every day. Um, and when he's not around, that's something that we do miss. Ryan, yep. I get that like players are in the room and, and coaches maybe have different ways of managing that. But during times like this, how can a coach loosen things up or, or kind of affect the mood of a group that, that's maybe fighting a little bit? Um, I, I don't. They've dropped two games. so. Yeah. Um, we had a good road trip. We came back and we didn't have a good game against San Jose. I thought we started really well um, last night, um, but we gave up the two goals in, in, in quick order. So it's, it's about reminding them, I think, a lot of times of the things that they do well and have done well, and, and we need to see that consistently for 60 minutes. You talked to Mackenzie Way here, Dominic Huberto. Now, you, you as all are sort of, last night's game didn't bother you as much as, as, as the San Jose game, eh? Yeah. No, I, well, they bother you. Let, let, let's not. Um, go that far but there's a difference um, you know the, the San Jose game was wasn't us uh, period last night was better in regards to how we expect guys to compete and play and work um, we just weren't able to get the job done or weren't able to you know when we were playing well get the goal we needed to try to get ourselves going Husk, when you think about all the noise on the outside, the distractions about a looming trade deadline that's been talked about to death and then all of a sudden you couple that with a few losses what do you see? I know you never want to see him happy around this time, but what is the mood inside that when you, you know, when you meet with these guys for meetings or you see them in and around about the signs that you need to see that maybe they're handling this the right way and, and blocking everything? It, yeah, they're still engaged. That's the first thing. So when you have a one-on-one -on -one meeting with the player or if you have a, the group in a team setting like we did this morning, they're still engaged. And you would expect nothing different from the guys that we have. Do you go back to Marshall tomorrow? Uh, we'll see. McKenzie also mentioned a little bit of the physicality, maybe wanting to see a little bit mm -hmm. more throughout uh, throughout the course of the game. Are you seeing kind of similarities in terms of, you know, maybe not the big hits, but just engaging in that way a little bit more? You have to, and you, you have to play the game with some hatred. Uh, you really do. You hate to say that sometimes, but if you want to be an effective player, whether you're a skilled guy or not, you have to have hatred of, of not only who you're playing, but hatred of losing, maybe more so than you like to win. Uh, and that needs to be present from everybody. How do you, how do you manufacture that then? Um, that's what makes players who they are. That's why they're playing in the NHL, because most guys do have it. It's a matter of tapping into it on a regular basis.